Speaking of new things, uh, normally we don't really cover a lot of like virtual box releases. It's not really a hot topic. Have we ever we, covered virtual box We probably box releases. never covered a virtual box release. But hmm. times are a changing, Michael. You got to keep up with the times and the people demand more virtual box coverage. I don't think anyone has ever asked for this. So let, what are we talking about here? All right. So... <laughs> Uh, this week, although I had virtual some, box is important because yeah. it does it does make it easy for people to get started with virtual machines and that sort of stuff. So I'm not yeah, we're not well, really bashing it. It's just not something you typically would talk. It seems about. like you are bashing. It seems like you're a virtual box hater. And you I know mean, what? no, 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 no. Here's the thing. I don't hate virtual box. I'm not a big fan of Oracle, but that's a different topic. <laughs> oh, Ryan has a very important reason, though. So. Yeah, I had a personal experience <laughs> with virtual box that makes it something. Uh, why I wanted to bring it to our audience first. Uh, let's start because we do have a lot of new listeners. Like it's been crazy the last few months, Michael, like the amount of new people who are listening to this show. Oh yeah. Uh, Mm -hmm. We didn't expect that. Thank you. Uh, Welcome. And we also got some feedback that we need to also cover some stuff from the basics because there's a lot of our new audience that are former windows users that are wanting to come to Linux, which is welcome. Really awesome. Love Welcome to, to, the, to the to the to the wonderful garden. I feel like Pootie Pie had a big part in this too. I think it's mostly us, but <laughs> Rob, yeah. not by my, his my million head. subscribers. Just that. I mean, just because we have like yeah. t- we have twenty five thousand for the show, and he has one hundred and ten million. That doesn't really make I mean, much but, difference, right? You know. Does it? We've got hundreds of thousands of podcast listeners, so that's, that's true. Overall, we have a pretty, pretty large, we're pretty important. We actually, we actually, seriously, we have grown a, quite a bit. There's been like ten thousand new subscribers in this past like month, so it's pretty that's cool. Insane. So thank you for everybody who's who's joining the the community, and uh, feel free to send your comments to us. We all we always want to get feedback, um, but. There's a lot of cool feedback. We are getting uh, all sorts of stuff. But not virtual to, box feedback. But not virtual box stuff. It could be, depending right. on this particular well, That's why topic. you may notice that we're covering some, when we're covering these topics, we're trying to also cover some explanations of what they are. And I know for the experienced listeners, you're like, why are you telling us what virtual box is? We know what virtual box is. Well, we're trying to help out some of the new folks. So let's start with the fact virtual box is mostly open source. Mostly, I say, because its core is open source, but all of the extension packs and stuff are not uh, necessarily open source. So um, mostly open source. There all are alternatives for this, like KVM, QEMU, UTM, Parallels, VMware, Hyper-V. There's so many uh, mm-hmm. alternatives for this type Good of known thing. Known Boxes is boxes another one. Boxes is one of my yeah, favorite. Yeah, Boxes is awesome, too. I like Boxes. Yeah, Vert Manager is another one. Mm-hmm. But Virtual Box, I would argue, is one of the best known across all operating systems. So people who are yeah. on Windows, Mac, Linux, VirtualBox is one that probably pops up very frequently. It's along with one Parallel. of the most knowns that's not like uh, commercial. Like it's one of the, it's definitely the most known that's open source. It's been around for a very long time when Sun started them. Uh, and that's why Oracle bought it. And anyway. Um, it allows you to run virtual machines. We should probably say that. Yes, it does. So help if you, you want to run Windows, but you want to also run Linux in a virtual machine without having your whole operating system change over, you want to test Linux installs, whatever, you can use VirtualBox. If you're in Linux, you can use VirtualBox yeah. to test out other Linux distros. Or better or yet, if you Windows. do the reverse of doing the Windows inside the yeah. virtual machine. Exactly. Because that is, I actually used to do this for a very long time. When I was, um, when I first switched over to Linux, I was in the, I was still, I was still, I'm a graphic designer, so I'm still in graphic design, but I was doing graphic design in Photoshop on Linux through a Windows VM. Because that part is necessary because Photoshop has always been a little bit... Uh, Adobe is not the most friendly company, yeah. even to their customers. That was so, until you found Photo You know, that was <laughs> until I found Photo I, I I use Photo now, but for a very long time, over a decade, I used virtual machine of... Uh, actually, it was VirtualBox, but I used a, a VM of Windows to be able to run Photoshop. And from within Linux, from within Linux. Yeah. So I was 99% Linux and Ryan would always give me a hard time about like, yeah, mm. but not a hundred percent. Yeah. So <laughs> now let's in some now, shows. Thank you. Right? Photo you P first of all. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Luckily um, we've, we've got past that problem. Well, virtual box has a new version 7.1.10, which has support for Linux kernels 6.15 and 6.16. It also has revamped UI and improvements for arm virtualization. Oh, that's and this cool. becomes important to the rest of the story. Oh, now so, we know why we're talking about. Okay, gotcha. So here I am. You guys know I'm in college for cybersecurity. 
Mm -hmm. about 70% complete. It's been a great journey. I get to pick an elective. And one of the elective choices I get is Linux and operating systems. And I'm like, (laughs) of course I'm going to pick that as my elective. That is the easiest elective you could possibly have. This is going to be so simple of a class to get through for me. That's awesome. Now, I joined the class and imagine my surprise when the professor is like, hey, know your show? I actually submitted my first paper and they're like, hey, know know your show, really enjoy it. And uh, I know you were at the Red Hat Summit because we watch the show. So that was that's fun. that's fun, you know. Like, yeah. You, so that's that's that's, cool. that's probably really good for you or really bad for you. Like, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. If they listen to the show and then they you say something really ridiculous, like Dopa Luca or something, and uh, <laughs> it might be like, does this, this guy really the know what he's talking about? Fourth professor in my college that has known this show, and uh, you know, I think it's like a it's a little bit of a cheat code for me here. Mm. To, to it could that. be. Yeah. It could be. Yeah. But the first assignment was a really daunting one, Michael. It was install Linux. <laughs> and you have to prove <laughs> you installed Linux and write a paper on why you're choosing which distro and what So system, you, of course, you know, chose Slackware. Like, what's that? <laughs> Slackware. You, no, Arch, of course. I went with Arch. <laughs> uh, so I was like, well, I can't do something too simple because they kind of know the show, right? And... I just I mean, got back that, from. That, that you're putting yourself on a higher. I'm a putting higher myself platform. on this pedestal that I shouldn't. That, right? No, I mean in the sense of like not pedestal, as in since you're like talking yourself being good. I'm talking about like you're putting yourself at that. that you're you're giving yourself expectation and obligation that they are they're on that they have for you when they might just be like, hey, he's you know this is part of the system. You just do whatever you want. And like we watch the show, we know you're an idiot. Just do a simple. Ubuntu they could. Install they could. And be done. I mean, yeah. they if they watch it, they clearly know that. Yes. <laughs> So, <laughs> no, Ryan, so, you, know, you should be making your own distro with Linux from scratch. That's yeah, that's what, what I should have done because that would have really impressed them. Um, <laughs> and they would have asked you, why didn't you already, spend a week and a half on this? <laughs> all my machines already have Linux on it. So it was kind of like one of those <laughs> things where they were really talking about VMs in the class for people to start with because, and it makes sense because they don't want a bunch of people wiping their machines on accident or whatever. So I was like, I'm going to do something in a VM and you know what? I'm going to use the MacBook Air M4 and I'm going to put Linux in, in utilize UTM as the, the base to, as the virtualization software to install. And in the UTM, it has a library of distros you can choose. And one of those was Fedora 38. And so when you click that image, though, it's already installed for you through the UTM gallery. So that didn't work because, again, you have to do screenshots and things within the paper of showing your installation and prompts and things. So I need to install from scratch. So I was like, well, I'll just download Fedora 42 and I'll put it in UTM and I'll use the same virtualization for video and other things and get this running. Now, as you guys know, I work full time. Plus, we have a podcast network we run. Plus, I go to college. So, so he has tons of time to do that. So I generally do my classes at night, late at night. So now I'm going through this install with UTM and I get Fedora 42 installed after I did the, the gallery one and realized it's not going to work. Download Fedora 42, go to do the install and everything works. I get through all the installation screens, do my screenshots and boom, no display. Get this Mm -hmm. no display error when it reboots and it will not work. So I switched to there's like 15 different display options you can choose. I switched to all those. It doesn't work. I start going through support forums and things and find that eventually there's a bug in UTM with the latest Fedora and with the display thing. And here are these workarounds you can try. I tried all the workarounds. Now we're like an hour in for this simple class of installing Linux, <laughs> okay, which I can do with my eyes closed. I do it 20 minutes before shows. I'll distro hop and be yeah. successful. It's true. Well, for this class, part. I'm failing. It is now 1130 at night, right? I've got work the next day. They've got to get this paper written. So I go download VirtualBox and I'm dun, like, dun, please, uh, VirtualBox. please boot, just please work. And so I take the ISO, throw it in VirtualBox, install it. It boots, it works, no display error, no having to play with different configurations. It's just there. So really appreciate this new version of VirtualBox uh, and the fact that they put. So sometimes these releases sound really simple and not interesting. But in my Mm -hmm. case, that was a very important fix that they have Mm -hmm. in Mm -hmm. place. uh, And also VirtualBox, uh, sometimes distributions have like 
um, some kind of kernel packages for the live ISO that has like the V box stuff. So it's automatically detecting that it's yeah. coming in and going into a virtual box. So they come with the uh, packages for that. And that might not be true for the other tools. So like, that's very cool in the sense of like being able to, uh, you know, detect that sort of stuff and have a better experience. Cause I, I mean, I've, I, I can't remember the last time I ran virtual box and it didn't work to any degree that was like, it's true, not easily overcome. You know, like you could, I've had issues obviously, but in the sense of, um, most of the time, you don't really have to deal with it in any huge degree. Maybe you have to change a checkbox in the settings for a particular feature to work or something like that. But for the most part, it's not that hard. It, it's I mean, interesting you say that because UTM has been kind of a mixed bag. Sometimes it works really well and sometimes it doesn't. And sometimes it really works really well. And then you try the virtual machine a few weeks later and it stops working really well. I've had a mm. lot of issues, honestly, with UTM, but a lot of people recommend it for mac but it hasn't been the greatest experience with stability in comparison now i have also played with parallels and vmware and a lot with kvm but that's in linux so that's different uh, because everything's stable in linux but parallels and vmware do a pretty good job as well with the stability piece of it but virtualbox always works and you don't have to pay for it and it was there and so there you go that's my story and (laughs) next time i will not get creative and not touch the mac and just install it on a regular dang computer that already has linux on it like all my computers do and just reinstall the stupid thing and be done i learned my lesson it's like oh arm feature i'm gonna try this out even though i don't have to (laughs) and there is no reason for it and as i could solve this problem in 15 minutes and be completely done with this lesson now he's learned another lesson yes don't overcomplicate things keep it simple don't do the (laughs) shoe on head thing ryan don't do the shoe on head coming from you that's priceless because you are mr shoe on head themselves so uh that's that's (laughs) those who are new to this show that's a running gag in the sense he says that i do things too complicated it's like (laughs) where do i put the shoe on your head even though that doesn't make any sense however i'm happy to report that's ryan now yeah. Well, there's another lesson here. There's an important life hack here. Anytime you taunt the universe, the universe smacks you down like the bug you are. And here I was when I took the class bragging to my wife and friends that I'm taking a Linux, <laughs> I'm taking a Linux and operating system course. And they're like, oh, it's going to be so easy for you. I'm <laughs> like, I know, right? And then I'm up till midnight installing Linux like a noob. <laughs> the the so, first, the, the very first, first assignment. Task. Yeah. Like, <laughs> unbelievable. Uh, you know? that's the universe great. smacked that's me down. Great. I mean, so it's a good go. story, and I appreciate it. I, I mean, I, I'm happy this happened to you because we got a good story for the show. Yeah, but you also, Absolutely. also, you've learned a valuable lesson. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Michael. I appreciate yeah. that. Yes. Yeah, and VirtualBox has really improved. In fact, its its update cadence is much better now than it used to be. It used to be you had to wait a while before you could use the latest and greatest kernel, and now they're really on top of that's it. true. There used yeah. to be like a, a month period between yes. the new kernel release and the new release yeah. of VirtualBox, uh, but now uh, it's actually been quite good these days. Like, I don't like the fact that the USB stuff is inside that little extension pack, but I mean, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You, can't, boy, you know, yeah. can't really complain about, you know, get everything perfect, I guess. You can't look a gift goat in the mouth, you know? A gift goat, yeah. I wouldn't say VirtualBox is the goat. What would be the goat <laughs> virtual machine tool? KVM. KVM, 100%. yeah, yeah, KVM. Yeah. KVM is the goat. Yeah, Vert Manager plus KVM. Yeah. yeah. VMware is pretty good, too, because it has, it's always from it the beginning. It was good. Yeah. <laughs> well, see, now you guys are confusing but, people. We had decided KVM is the goat. Then Jill comes in and says... <laughs> You know, well, she's but. she's also in like the nostalgic version of v- yeah. VMware when VMware used to be good and it was its own company and they cared about their customers. And that is not <laughs> VMware now because they were yeah. bought by Broadcom and they decided to uh, uh. get rid of everybody. They I actually talked to some people at the Red Hat Summit and they we were in line waiting for the backpack, which, by the way, very long line for the backpack. Uh, but there was uh, still a good backpack, by the way, just it's fine. But. In that line, I was talking to them about it, and this one guy said that he was they they were they were there to learn about some virtualization features and stuff in Rail, and then someone mentioned like, "Hey, have you heard about the latest issue with VMware Broadcom?" And I'm, no, they're apparently sending cease and desist letters to people who have perpetual licenses of VMware, mm-hmm. and uh, yeah, 
that seems like a like a good idea. Yeah. <laughs> well, from the olden days, what, what I'm thinking is that VMware was one of the the first virtual machines that supported um, uh, discrete GPUs and uh, drivers and acceleration. Right. Uh, using Linux. And the that was the history of VMware deal. is good. Yeah. yeah. That was a big deal. I mean, I could run uh, Skyrim, you know, right. on a Windows virtual machine on Linux. So they were the first to do the G- GPU acceleration. And um, VirtualBox was an early adopter of that as well. And theirs has gotten better and better over the years. Definitely. And they still are open source. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Oh, VMware was never open source, but. Yeah, it's, it's no. at least it, you know, VirtualBox is still like actually committed to being a good product. <laughs> yeah. 